Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Appendicular Skeleton. Uh, the Appendicular Skeleton is named after the appendages, of course, that would be the arms and the legs, and the bones associated with the movement and stability of those. So we're going to start with the pectoral girdle. Uh, the pectoral muscles obviously are up here, and this girdle, as they call it, is attached to that region and helps give your arms movement and stability. Uh, we're going to start with the clavicles. The clavicles, also known as the collarbones, are right here. And there's two ends. At one end, they attach to the sternum. So they actually call it the sternal end of the clavicle. That's the more medial side. And then on the other end these is the acromial end. And it's called that because of a part on the scapula, which we'll get to in a sec. So you do have two separate clavicles or collarbones. And that's part of the stability of not just uh, the upper arm bones, but also of the upper chest. Uh, as you can see, it connects directly to the sternum, which connects to the rib cage. The scapulae, that is a plural term. Each one is a scapula, also known as the shoulder blades. So this is a um, frontal view or anterior view, um, as if we're looking through this person's chest. So from the back, you know, the shoulder blades are more obvious. Some people can stick them out pretty far. They have a lot to do with um, connecting of back muscles uh, associated with movement of the shoulder. The scapula is interesting because most of it is this giant blade-looking thing that they call the body of the scapula. But these little projections up here that connect with the clavicles are very important. This right here is actually called the acromion and it's right here as well. Uh, you can barely feel it. If you find where your uh, clavicles end, this bump right here is the acromion. Some people call it the acromion process. And that's why they call this end and this end of the clavicle the acromial end. So that is pretty much the uh, pectoral girdle the other thing I wanted to mention is that in the next set of lessons on joints, we're going to talk about ball and socket joints. The classic ball and socket is how the femur uh, connects to the pelvic area. But you could claim that this is a ball and socket joint. It's same basic type of movement, but it's not a hollowed out bony section that's fitting the head of the humerus, the upper arm bone. It's actually a rotator cuff, and most of you have heard that term before, the rotator cuff is not bony, it's actually a lot of connective tissue, uh, ligaments, tendons, uh, and muscle fibers associated with fitting in uh, that part of your arm.